So with all of the AI stuff going on in Microsoft 365 right now, between the like 12 different co-pilots and AI inserted in various different places, I feel like the application of AI in Power Automate is honestly my favorite because it's purposeful, it's directed, and it's more likely to help me save time in my job versus take my job. I feel more in control, if that makes sense. Power courses through you. Authority. So we're going to tell the AI who's boss today, and we're going to control every step of the process. And let me show you what the flow looks like first, and then we'll go through how to make it. So here's what it looks like. I'm going to submit this feedback form, and we are going to see what happens. So submit. So the Power Automate email came through. This is coming from approvals because we want to have an approval on or a review on the AI-generated text before we do anything with it. So this is using a special approvals action for um, specifically for approving text to let you modify the text when you approve it. So if we don't like anything about this, we can edit it and then approve it. I'm going to leave it as is for now. We can enter comments if we want to and submit it. And with that, it actually goes and updates the Excel file that the Microsoft form is synced to to store everything that we're doing. So the response is here. This is the approved response, not the raw one. The outcome of the approval and my feedback. And then we also have a sentiment value here. So um, this one is a positive review and you can see the scores for it here. So then the next action is that the flow is going to take that approved and edited response, put it into an email back to the submitter. And you can do other kinds of stuff with this too. It's one of those things where really the limit is kind of your creativity. So let's go through how to build this. So I'm going to start in Microsoft Forms. We're just going to make a super basic feedback form. Um, it's best to make these forms in a Microsoft 365 group if you have one. So I'm going to make a new group form. The reason you'd make it in a group is because if you don't make it in a group, it's in your OneDrive. And your OneDrive is attached to your account, so if you leave your organization, it goes away. We're going to add a text field. We're going to make it long answer, required, and I'm going to add another text field for the first name so that we can use that in the email. We'll make last name not required. All right, so let's create our Power Automate flow. I'm going to head to the Power Automate app. So I'm going to start out by making my prompt first because the AI Builder action is going to be looking for that when we're in the flow. So I'm going to go to the More category in the left sidebar here and then go to AI Hub. And we're going to go to AI Prompts here. And then we're going to select Create Text with GPT using a prompt. So if I select that, it gives me an example. But what I want to do is click on this Create Custom Prompt option. And by the way, if you need to edit your prompt later, this is where you come back to. You can't edit it directly from the flow, but um, you can edit it over here in this AI Hub. So for our prompt, we're going to do something like, all right, so you're a customer service representative. You respond to customer feedback in a way that helps the customer feel heard while not overpromising. Use an enthusiastic tone. So something I noticed with the AI Builder actions is that the, the guardrails are real. Like I tried to get this to be snarky and have a sense of humor, and it absolutely would not. Uh, it will only be polite. So now we're going to insert the field from our form that it is going to be responding to or taking some action on. So I'm going to click on add a dynamic value here, and this is going to be user feedback. You can call this whatever you want. And then save. So the idea with these is that they are reusable, so you could use this across multiple flows. Okay, so we've saved that. It looks like my prompt name disappeared. That's kind of weird. So down here you can test it if you want to. This is what it's going to look like. You can go ahead and modify it if you need to. I'm going to close this and I can see that it's saved down here. So that's good. So let's go and create our Power Automate flow. So if I go to the create menu here, we're going to create an automated cloud flow. And the trigger is going to be when a new response is submitted in Microsoft Forms in this example. SharePoint would also work great for this. So would Dataverse or pretty much anything else since there's a jillion connectors now. So I'm going to turn the new designer off. If you're watching this more than a couple of months after this video is released, you might be fine with the new designer, but I um, had issues in the first action when I tried it. So we're going to 
We're gonna go back to classic. So this wants us to select our form. The forms that are created in a Microsoft 365 group don't seem to show up in this drop-down menu as of right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab it from the form URL. So if I go back over here and just look in the address bar, there's a and ID equals. So this is gonna be the form ID, this big long string of letters and numbers here. And we're just gonna copy that and paste it into the flow. But the way that we wanna do it is by entering the custom value here, this one at the bottom. If you just paste it in the box, it won't work. Um, I realize I have several forms with very similar names in that drop down box. So it seems like it's showing up there, but it's not, trust me. So we've got the form ID, and now we need another step to get the response details because that's not included in trigger for whatever reason. So this will get us the fields in the form. So same thing for this one, for the form ID, enter custom value, paste in that same ID. And for the response ID, we just give it this one from the trigger over here. And then we want our AI Builder action. So AI Builder is licensed interestingly. It uses credits instead of a monthly fee. So these credits come with a lot of the license packages in Power Platform. So your organization probably already has credits. They may or may not be already used. So that's something to think about. Um, if you're an administrator, you can check how many credits you have available in the Power Platform Admin Center. So down here, if I open this in another tab, it's under resources and capacity in the left sidebar. They're right here. These credits are not assigned to any particular individuals. They're pooled, okay? So anybody can use them. You can assign them to specific environments if you want to control it a little bit, but that's how it works. Um, if I come back here, let's add our AI builder action. So we want create text with GPT using a prompt right here. It's in the AI builder category if it doesn't show up at the top for you. And for our prompt, we're gonna select the one that we just created, the demo one. And we need to give it some fields from our form. So that would be this feedback here. That's what we want it to analyze in its response. And you'll notice that there's an additional context field here. If you're passingly familiar with AI stuff, you probably have heard of a system message. So a system message is something that you give AI to strongly control how it responds to things. So you can tell it to have a certain tone of voice or respond in a certain way. This is not a system message, okay? I played around with this. I could not get this to modify the response in any way. My understanding is that's what it's supposed to do is let you add additional context to the replies, right? I feel like that might be a bug and maybe they'll fix it at some point, but just FYI. The other thing I noticed is that the AI has very controlled responses. So this is not your standard GPT. It also had a very consistent response. So normally when you use GPT, like it'll have slight variations on the kind of feedback it gives you each time. Um, this is very controlled, which I think is intentional. So that's my take on the GPT prompting in AI Builder. Uh, so we've got our text. I'm going to add in also some sentiment analysis. So if I search for sentiment, there's two options here. You've got the AI Builder and the Azure Cognitive Service for Language. The second one uses a separate Azure service. So it doesn't use the AI Builder tokens or credits. It's its own thing, which might be a good thing depending on how heavily you're using it um, to be able to pay as you go versus using the credits, right? So I'm going to use AI Builder because I don't have a cognitive service subscription. And we need to give it a language and the text. And now we're going to do the approval step. So for approvals, I feel like the start and wait for an approval of text is like basically made for what we're doing here because what this does is it lets you modify the text as part of the review process. So we're going to use that one and you can give it a title and then for the suggested text we want to give it the GPT output in the create text action 
and I'm going to assign it to myself. And details is where you can put in additional information. So it might be a good thing to include here what the user's feedback was so that you can compare it to the response and see if it makes sense. You could also put the date in here. For the item link, if you're using SharePoint as a source, you could put the SharePoint item link here. That would make it so that when they click that, they can go to the item in SharePoint, but Forms doesn't really have an equivalent to that, so I'm just gonna leave that blank. And then what we wanna do is have different actions according to the outcome of that approval. So I'm gonna add a condition control, and we're gonna say, if the outcome is equal to approve, we want approve, not approved, because that's the proper term for this outcome. And then we can add an action in the yes branch for that. So if it gets approved, then we can email back the submitter of the form. Send an email v2. We can send this to the person who submitted it responder's email. And for the body, we can use their first name in here since we collected that in the form. Maybe I'll put hi in front of it. <laughs> hi, whatever your name is. Come, uh, I'm going to go down two lines and then put in the reviewed text, not the raw text from GPT. So this is going to be accepted text. And you can put a signature line in here if you want to, like... So for the no branch, I'm going to leave this blank. So basically, if it's rejected, don't send an email. But you could put other steps in here if you wanted to. So now we want to update the original record with the information that we got from AI Builder. So the response and the sentiment, all that. We want to attach that back to the original record. And if you're using SharePoint, you'll use the update item action. We're using Forms. So Forms is a little bit strange. It's um, the results are synced to an Excel file in the SharePoint site that's attached to the Microsoft 365 group or the OneDrive that it was created in. So we can add columns to that Excel file. It doesn't seem to hurt anything as far as I can tell. Like I've tested adding columns to it and then adding and removing fields from the form and it seems to be okay. So let's go ahead and do that. If I go to my form and then go to the responses tab here, if I click on open in Excel, it'll open that Excel file where it lives, which is in the SharePoint site you can see up here. Scroll back over. So here's the sheet and we can add columns in here. So I'm gonna add one for the response. I'm gonna make that kind of wide because it's gonna be lengthy. And then we want the approval outcome. So that's the approved or rejected. And then we could also get all of the approval outcome details. And that's another lengthy text one, so I'm gonna make that kind of wide. And then the sentiment. So that's the sentiment label, positive, negative, neutral. And then um, I'm just going to pull one of the numeric values because they're all kind of semi-related. So that's going to be the probability that the response was positive. And I'm adding these as columns in here because that is usable data for us. So this is like tabular data, right? We can show a chart in Power BI of the average sentiment over time. We could highlight the low ones to show what we need to improve on um, because you can connect to this Excel file with Power BI directly and schedule a refresh on it. It's pretty cool. Same thing with SharePoint lists. You can connect to those directly too. Let's go back to our flow and add a new step to update this Excel file to reinsert all of those values. I'm gonna search for update row in Excel. It's this one. Again, if you're using SharePoint, it'll be update a list item. And for the location, we wanna select the group that this was attached to. And the document library is going to be the documents link here. And the file is always going to be at the root of that library, so it's usually not too difficult to find. The name should match exactly what is this one. And for the table, this seems to kind of vary depending on where you create your form. Um, I, the one that I created in OneDrive was named something different, but it should be like the only table in there. So just select it. And the key column in this file, there's an ID column. So that's the one we want to use here for that key value. So ID, 
And for the value, we just give it the response ID here. So insert that, and then we can add in all of our data values. So the response text, we're gonna use accepted text from the approval. Approval outcome, we're gonna add in the outcome of the approval, so that's approved or rejected. Approval outcome summary is going to be, uh, it's actually called response summary, that's close enough. So this is gonna have the approver's names in it, the date and time of the approval, and then the sentiments, for the sentiment, we want the overall text sentiment, not the sentence sentiment. And then probability overall text is positive is the value we want in there. So let's save it and then test this. So it's giving me a warning. That warning is about um, not having a approval action after the create text with GPT. It's because it's not directly after the action. We still have an approval action. If you find this warning super annoying, you could just move the approval action to be right underneath the GPT step. We can just close it, it's fine. So we're going to test and then we're gonna submit our form. All right. So now it's waiting on the approval. If we head on over to our email, we have one here. So it says, please review this. And it looks like it added an emoji in there, which I guess is kind of cool. Um, so we can edit this if we want to. Have a great day. And then we can approve it. So when we submit that, it is going to send the email to the person who submitted the form. So here's the response. It's addressed to them. It's got our signature in it. And it has our edits that we made here. So if we go over to the Excel file, this third row here, because I submitted a couple in between testing things. Um, so here's the response text that we modified. And then here is the approval outcome and our approver information. Like it doesn't actually have the comments in it. I'll show you how to get that in a second. The comments are a little bit weird because there can be multiple of them. I totally forgot it wasn't in the summary, but it's gettable. Um, the sentiments is positive, and we have a positive sentiment score of 0.99. And I want to talk a little bit about files, too, because one of the first things that people want to do when they start using this is start doing things with file content. So for reference, file content is trickier to work with than forms-based content. Because um, Power Automate, when it gets file content, it's often encoded, especially for office files, meaning that if, let me show you one, see what it looks like. So for example, I have a flow that gets file content here. It's getting an Excel file content. It's in the body down here. If I copy this out and put it in a text file, this is what it looks like. So if you wanted to use file content in Power Automate with AI, you would need to decode the file. There is an action to do this in OneDrive, but there is not an action to decode the file um, for a SharePoint hosted file. I totally realize that they're technically the same technology, but the action only exists for OneDrive. What people tend to do to work around this is do some janky things with sending the file to OneDrive and then sending it back to SharePoint. But I feel like that kind of edges into um, trying to skate around licensing stuff. So I don't really recommend doing that. There is a third party connector that will translate in and out of base 64, which is what this is, but the external connectors are going to be an additional licensing cost too. So files are complicated. Um, form-based data is much easier. That's why we're using it here. So for the comments, there's a few different ways to do this. I'm going to kind of go through the super lightweight, easy way. Um, that would be to use a variable. So we're going to initialize a variable. And I'm going to make this a string. We're going to call it comments. And then down here below your approval step, just add an action for append to string variable. And just append the comments together. So we only have one required approver. That means there's only ever going to be one approval comments. Um, if we try and use the comments dynamic content without doing this step, 
it adds in and apply to each loop and makes things kind of crazy. So um, we're just going to append everything to one variable and it's only going to append one thing, but so it goes. And I want the comments in here. And comments, this one. So it's going to apply to each of the responses, append a string variable and put the comments in here. You could prefix this with the word comments and then insert it down here. We can put a space in between or maybe a pipe character and the comments variable. That way when it puts it in Excel, it'll insert the comments. You can also do an expression to just get the first value out too, um, but I'm just gonna do the append because I feel like this is a no code video, so I'm trying to do the no code things. So at this point we are done. Thank you for watching and have a great day.